Hi, welcome to the part five of this video series. We are looking at AWS Certified Developer Associate real certification questions. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. It takes a lot of effort to put in these contents which are near accuracy. Please remember these are all real certification questions. So the chances of same or similar questions coming in the exam is very high. Needless to say, please focus on the concepts and do not rectify the answers. For previous questions, refer parts one to four of this video series. Let's jump into the question. In short, what the question is asking is there is an application which has microservice style structure and you want to trace the information. That's it. That's the question. Whenever you see the word trace, whenever you see the word trace, always think of X-ray. But in these options, if you see, there are two options with X-ray. So which one is correct? Let us debug the options one by one. Option A. Option A suggests it's like building the container from AWS X-ray daemon base image. So what? Consider this as you know what is the difference between X-ray and CloudWatch and CloudTrail. This is very important to understand. X-ray is just like your X-ray machine. So this is an X-ray machine where human beings are placed and they try to identify what is the problem by taking an X-ray of that body part. For example, chest X-ray. In order to know if it is pneumonia, people just take chest X-ray and then see what are the patches on the lungs. So X-ray serves that purpose and that is exactly what our question asks. They want to trace the information. Now what is CloudWatch? CloudWatch is like your blood pressure monitoring tool. So it will monitor and tell you these are the statistics. This is your blood pressure, whether it's low or high. And what does CloudTrail do? CloudTrail is just like your hospital record. It has a history of when did you visit the hospital? What happened? What was the medication done? What were the lab tests conducted? So these are all your activity records. So that is the difference between X-Ray, CloudWatch and CloudTrail. Here clearly we want to trace the information. X-Ray, when you take the X-Ray of a human being, it doesn't tell you what is the disease. It just takes the X-Ray of the parts. Here also you just want to trace. After tracing, is it is the blood pressure low, high? or what were your last activities, medical activities, it will not tell you all those answers. Hence, options B and D would be incorrect. Now, we just have two options, that is A and C, out of which we have to choose an answer, both has X-rays. The problem with A is, it's saying you build a container from an AWS X-ray daemon image. It's like you build a human being from an X-ray machine. You cannot do that. What you need to do is option C, you need to take a human being and plug X-ray machine on top of it. Similarly here, option C suggests you install X-ray daemon on each ECS instances. ECS instances are like human beings. You will put the X-ray machine on the human being. So that's why C is the correct answer. Let's move into the next question, question 27. So the question is very simple. You have a static website on bucket one and it is also accessing photographs from bucket two. And when it is trying to access the photographs in the bucket two, it has certain issues, like certain photos are not shown. And we need to identify what can be the root cause of this problem. So let's scan through the options. A suggests the reference bucket is in another region. So this can be an issue, but we don't know if this is a multi-region deployment. The question doesn't say that. Okay, so we do not know this. Since the question doesn't talk about multi-region, I would strike out this option. So this is incorrect for me at this point in time. Let's see option B. It says the images must be stored in the same S3 bucket. There is no thumb rule similar to this. You can have multiple S3 buckets and you can store various images in multiple buckets. So this is for sure incorrect. Third says that port 80 must be opened. Port 80 is used for HTTP qualification and port 443 is used for HTTPS, that's the secured website protocol. Now, these two ports are always available. We do not set these. These are always available by default and it is used for communication within AWS regions 
within AWS cloud uh, environments as well as on-prem. So this, I don't think so, this is an issue because we are trying to uh, communicate between two buckets. If you see here, it is trying to communicate between two buckets. Both are in the AWS environment and hence uh, we do not need port 80 as such to be explicitly configured. So the last option says use cross origin resource sharing and this seems correct because whenever we have multiple S3 buckets or S3 resources, we should use cores because it helps applications loaded in one domain to interact with resources in a different domain. And hence, this is my answer. Let us look into this question. So we are using DynamoDB as a database to manage and track orders. What is DynamoDB? It is a fully managed NoSQL database. That means it is not like your RDBMS database. And here what it's saying is it is using splitting the table logic using the order date, which is fine. If you have higher volumes of data to be stored, you would have to split the tables. And then there is an event which you know creates spikes in orders and your writes are choked and your throughput is also less. What it means is both the write and the reads are, are in a mess. If your writes and reads are in a mess, what you have to do, you have to increase the read and write capacity. In the DynamoDB world, there are two modes, on demand and provisioned. And these choosing one of these modes will only change the way you are charged for the read and write throughputs. So we usually try to provision the request units, read request units and write request units for provisioned uh, mode. But for on-demand modes, it is dynamic. So in this question, if there is a choke up of the writes, then we should increase the read and write capacity. So option B should be my answer. Let's scan through the options, other options, why they are wrong. A tells you to create a new table for every order date. We are similar to that functionality. We are already doing it here, where we are using the order date and we are splitting the DynamoDB table. This is already happening. So this is duplication of effort. Now this one says, C says, add a random number suffix to the partition keys. This one that is happening, that's as good as partition. And if you add random suffix, it will not help you with writes. Partition keys will not help you with writes. It helps you with reads. So it will solve only the throughput issue partially. It is not solving your problem fully. So that's why this is wrong. Similarly, adding a global secondary index will facilitate your reads. It will make your reads faster. It will not make your writes faster. So this is also not solving your problem fully, just partial resolution. And hence, this would be my final answer. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. It helps me understand whether you like this content or not. The subscription will help you get alerts whenever such informative contents are posted. This brings us to the end of part five. Please stay tuned for more such parts.